Um, it's lovely to be here, and it's a privilege, actually. Um, I think I'm going to give the only talk that doesn't have anything to do with trees, so hopefully you'll find it inspiring and motivating and exciting at the end of the day. The world of communication. I think there's only one simple, fundamental question you have to ask at the end of all your efforts, and it's quite simply, are you being heard? Are all those efforts that you're putting into it, the time, the resource, the investment, actually getting through? And when you take a step back and you think about this increasingly noisy, cluttered, fragmented world that we live in, uh, one where Pokemon Go um, is sadly far more entertaining than the plight of Forest with 10 million active users a day in the last two weeks, um, I think a lot of our efforts are going to waste. And in fact, just last month, Ban Ki-moon went to the Cannes Advertising Awards. He went to go and speak to a bunch of advertisers to ask for their help to communicate the SDGs. And the task was so simple, and I think it echoes what we have to do in this room today. Help us transform a complex and abstract agenda into a personal and emotional story about how we can build a better world. I mean, if not that, then what? And that's what we've got to solve here today, and hopefully as you leave this room and into your networks, how you can take that communication further. But why is it so difficult? get asked that the whole time in the world of advertising. Why don't we just do it ourselves? And I think the challenge is that we've started to confuse two very different things. Information, which is giving out all the policies, the facts, the figures, the mandates, and actually getting completely overwhelmed by all the information, versus communication, which is getting through. Simple example, uh, Martin Luther King, when he stood up in front of an entire nation, he didn't say, I have a plan. <laughs> I think that would have been a bit of a letdown. And no doubt he had a plan but he had crystallized it into saying, I have a dream. And with that, he rallied an entire nation behind his vision. So how do you get to that? How do you get to that simplicity? Um, I often use the analogy of a artisan who carves these exquisite elephants. And when asked, how do you do that? He says, well, it's quite simple, really. I take a block of wood. This is my only reference to a tree, by the way. I take a block of wood, I take my knife, and I carve away everything that isn't an elephant. I carve away everything that isn't an elephant. That's such a perfect descriptor for what a great communication strategy should be about. Have you carved away everything that is superfluous? Um, at MNC Saatchi, uh, across the network, we talk about this as a philosophy of brutal simplicity of thought. Um, it's based on a very simple philosophy that it is far easier to complicate than to simplify. Um, and hopefully what I want to share with you now are three inspiring and motivating tenants to consider when developing your communication strategies and hopefully some interesting work to inspire you. The first thing that we talk a lot about is purpose. What is it that you're hoping to achieve at your most meaningful? And the first um, case study I'm going to show you comes actually out of our Cape Town office. Um, it was a small little idea of some street poll posters that are slowly turning into a global movement. Have a look. South Africa a country where the haves and have-nots live side by side, but seldom connect. People want to help, but aren't always sure how. And for the homeless, begging is degrading. In partnership with the Haven Night Shelter, the street store was born. The world's first rent-free, premises-free, free pop-up store for the homeless. Somewhere safe to give and easy to collect. Made only from posters, people hang up and drop off donations. Then the homeless choose things they actually want and like. For many used to rummaging in bins, this was their first dignified shopping experience. Shopping at the street store was for me very nice. The people was accepting me very with friendly faces. A week before the pop-up, we called for donations on social media. Within days, we found ourselves on prominent national blogs, news, radio, and TV. But the world wanted in too. Bono's one organization, Huffington Post, Good, and hundreds of others. Thousands of homeless were clothed in South Africa alone, and millions in free PR was generated. More importantly, we brought people together like never before. But homelessness is international, so we went open source. 
To date, 455 stores have popped up in 280 cities and 5,087 are in progress. Brand new way of helping the homeless. In South Africa. And it's now on Macaulay Avenue in Chattanooga. A few simple posters to restore the dignity to the homeless in Cape Town suddenly touch the lives of so many more. You are sent for me, but thank you very much. There's no way I can pay you back. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. I think we did the sums, and I think so far, I think 60,000 homeless people have benefited from that. And, um, sorry, the screen's blank here, but don't worry, I'll come back. What I think is so incredible is that there's four simple posters, but with a very powerful purpose to restore dignity to people who probably have never had it. I can actually choose something I want, rather than just give what's been, take that what's been given to me. So a simple purpose, restore dignity. The second thing to consider is this idea of who is your enemy? Um, we love having this conversation and debate with our clients. Um, if I take a brand like this, um, who's their enemy? If I asked you, you'd probably say Adidas or Puma. Um, but no, their enemy is apathy. Because if Nike can't get you up off the couch through their advertising, they can't motivate you to want to get out and do that run, they won't have a business. So your enemy is that thing that you've got to overcome in order to be successful. What are those barriers that exist? This next case study is breathtaking. Um, it's quite astounding in its simplicity. Um, a simple uh, stunt that they pulled off in Paris uh, to highlight the plight of water in Africa. Have a look. When we're thirsty, we just go and get water. But getting water here means spending the whole day walking. Our mission at Water for Africa is to build sustainable, clean sources of water for villages. We are saber to to make one last effort. <laughs> Batou Sané a parcouru les 42 km hier en marchant. Ces images avaient fait le tour du monde, d'abord le tour des réseaux sociaux. C'est une manière pour elle de récolter des fonds pour construire des pompes à eau dans son pays. People have donated so much more than I can ever have imagined. looking for a benchmark for simplicity, I think that's it. Um, what a powerful message, so simply delivered. But when you think about the enemy, um, if you live in a city like Paris or in Rome where there's a fountain every few hundred meters, uh, the idea of walking 42 kilometers to fetch water is it's incomprehensible. I can't even understand what you're talking about. And there they just brought it to life so brilliantly. So lastly, and actually one of my favorite is, what does success look like? So when you're developing those communication plans, what are you actually hoping to achieve? And this is beyond the facts and the figures. This is about what is it that you want people to think, to feel, to say, to do? What are those emotional triggers that we're going to pull in people? Um, the next ad I'm going to show you is from a global brand tackling a big issue, but bringing it right down to a human level in a really astounding way. Hi, Aaron. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Here. Show me what it looks like to fight like a girl. 
Now throw like a girl. Aw. So do you think you just insulted your sister? No. I mean, yeah, insulted girls, but not my sister. My name is Dakota, and I'm 10 years old. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Throw like a girl. Fight like a girl. What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. I think a really powerful piece of communication tackling a gender issue, but off trying to raise people's consciousness about those unconscious things that people say every day and don't actually realize what they're saying. And with 62 million views on YouTube, I think they've absolutely raised the consciousness behind it. So three things to think about. What's that clear purpose? What is it that we hope to achieve at our most meaningful? What is that enemy? What is that thing, that obstacle that we have to overcome? And make sure you're bringing that into the conversation. And lastly and importantly, what are you measuring? And hopefully, by doing this, we do what Ban Ki-moon spoke about, moving from the abstract and the complex into the personal and the emotional. Thanks very much.